Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren and I am a licensed cosmetologist in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I am here to talk to you today about whether you are a good fit for cosmetology, okay? So I've got a little list for you guys that I'm gonna go through. And some of these things um, are pretty mandatory, I would say, because um, if they're not, if you don't have them, then unfortunately, I don't think that you're going to be a good fit for the industry, but that is just my opinion, okay? So this video, as a disclosure, is simply my opinion and my experience from the industry, and this is what I think will help you be successful. If you have these things, if you're comfortable with these things, then you will probably be a good fit for the industry, um, as long as you find that you either already have a skill for hair or can learn the skill of hair because I did not know how to do hair until I went to cosmetology school. I had not, no idea. All right. So, oh, hit that like and subscribe for me, please. So you must be detail oriented. Um, if you are not detail oriented, you're going to be measuring things. You're going to be doing precise cutting. You need to do precise measuring, etc. If you are not detail oriented, this is going to be very problematic for you. Okay. You need to be good with people. This is the biggest thing. You can get away with most of the other stuff, but if you are not good with people, you need to choose a different industry because you need to be nice. You need to be good with people. You need to be easy to get along with. And that's just it. I could go on and on and on about that, but you need to be good with people. You need to be comfortable with talking to people. This includes strangers inside the salon setting and outside the salon setting. If you plan on quickly growing your business, for instance, whenever I go, I take my dog to this place called Lucky Dog and I often meet people there. I meet clients there. I'm like, hey, my name is Lauren and I am a cosmetologist. Do you have a hairstylist? And a lot of times people do, but occasionally people don't. And you know what? I get a new client and that's a great way to meet people. They get to see your face. Um, they get to, you get to see their hair right away to see if they're even a candidate that you're interested in. It is you seeking them out. So if you feel awkward about that, this might not be the career for you because you might have a hard time growing very quickly. If you, you, there's another option towards the end of, of this video that I will talk about. If you feel like you're uncomfortable with that, there's um, shepherd and sheep in the industry and you might just be more of a sheep instead of a shepherd. And I'll talk to you about that at the end. Um, you need to be comfortable navigating difficult moments with clients. Sometimes people are not going to like their hair. That's just the truth. You cannot make everyone happy. This will probably be touched on in every single video. You just can't make everyone happy and you're not going to make everyone happy. So you need to be comfortable with navigating those moments and saying, hey, okay, this did not go exactly as planned. How can we fix your hair from here or maneuver from here? So be comfortable with that. Be comfortable with guiding conversation. Sometimes you need to guide the conversation. Sometimes people are going to sit in your chair and they're going to talk about things that are negative. And a lot of times I will yell at my clients if they, not literally, but for instance, I have a client that always talks poorly about herself and I have yelled at her and told her, stop talking bad about yourself. Okay. Um, guiding conversations to positive moments while you're in the chair. Okay talking with strangers, dealing with people, and they may not like their hair, you need to be able to deal with ne negative feedback because you're going to get it. You're going to get it from your manager. You're going to get it from yourself. You're going to get it from your clients. So you need to be comfortable with filtering that, looking at those moments as ways for you to learn and grow, okay? You need to be comfortable with touching people like their hair and their neck and their like facial area, especially in school, you're going to have to do like facials and um, like pedicures and manicures um, and like head massages, shoulder massages, back massage, things like that. You need to be very comfortable with that kind of stuff. Um, facials are going to be limited, but the other stuff in school you're going to have to do in order to pass your hours. Okay. You need to be comfortable with working late nights and evenings. This is pretty much across the board in the industry, whether it's you 
at the salon working or whether it's you doing education online, et cetera, et cetera. It's not a forever thing usually for people in the industry, but it is a very big thing in the beginning. You, you need to be open to that. If you have, you know, anything keeping you from being able to do that, then you might need to reevaluate in this industry. You need to be organized. So I am not the best about this, um, but you need to try to be as organized as possible um, to keep track of all of the things that you need to do, okay? You need to be self-motivated. So self-motivation is huge in this industry. You, If you are not very self-motivated, if you are not comfortable with advertising yourself in public, like talking to strangers, if you are not... Um, comfortable with consistently posting on social media um and if you are a little bit more quiet if you are quiet you might not survive in this industry but with all of those things you might be more of a um, sh of a sheep versus a shepherd so a shepherd in the in the industry are going to be the people that are more driven self-motivated organized entrepreneur type mindset um willing to take risks for high high risk is high reward uh, willing to talk to strangers willing to really put themselves out there and yeah you know what i'm sure that people have laughed at me behind my back and probably continue to laugh at me behind my back or whatever i ain't worried about them i don't care you know what at the end of the day i am growing my business and that is great you cannot be afraid you cannot be afraid to put yourself out there. Otherwise, you are not going to be able to grow and um, in any industry. So you need to decide, are you a shepherd or are you a sheep? So I'm a shepherd. So my personality, I ended up opening my own business within um, a year of graduation. I'm one year into my business and I am nearly a six-figure stylist. Um, it has happened all very quickly. It is amazing. I cannot believe it, but I am so thankful. So that is that. Sheep in this industry are going to be people that go ahead and go into a salon that has a training program. And I did do some of a training program, but I did most of my education online. And that is a thing now. You do not have to go through a training program if you don't want to. Okay. That is optional. You are fully licensed when you graduate. If you are self-motivated and you work very hard, you can go into a booth rental, which is honestly, you're going to make more money. You can go into booth rental and if you and people in this industry are going to frown at this and probably even say nasty things in the comments because they'll be bitter because they went through a training program. Sorry, but it's not required. You can learn more on your own. I learned more on my own than I ever learned in the training program that I went to. So that's just that. So you can do that. This, this is no, there's no requirement one way or the other. You are completely licensed and able to do hair. If you mess up someone's hair or something, that's on you though. So you need to be careful about that. Um, but there are also sheep. So there's nothing wrong with being a sheep. We need sheep. Okay. I love sheep. They're so sweet. So sheep are the people that are going to, um, go through the training program. They are going to sit more underneath an employer and listen to what the employer said, let the employer do their marketing, guide them, provide clients for them, all of those things. Those are your sheep. Now there are people that kind of reside in the middle. There are people that go into these programs and move through and then they end up doing a lot of their marketing and a lot of these things and they may move on or they may stay kind of where they're at, but they may hand in hand get some of their clients from their employer and also build their own clientele as well. They're kind of like a part-time shepherd, right? And those people are, are actually amazing. Those are the people that I want working for me whenever I open a place. Those are the people that are, I think, just amazing because they are comfortable with working for someone else and going by when they say, you know, hey, you should be at the salon for this day or that day or whatever. They're not huge on resisting 
having a consistent schedule or this or that. They kind of listen to what needs to be done or whatever. Um, they're more easygoing. For me, I'm a little bit intense. And so I wasn't a very good sheep. I'm just, I'm, I'm a bad sheep, um, bad sheep. But, you know, I also, as a shepherd, like I want fellow shepherds. Um, so it's a little bit lonely as a shepherd. I will warn you that sometimes I think, well, what if I just did just go into a salon and work with other people because I get very lonely sometimes. And so I do have other stylists coming on soon. But anyway, so you kind of have those routes to go whenever you start to graduate, get closer to graduation and decide, am I a sheep or am I a shepherd or am I a sheep that wants to grow into a shepherd? Do I want to be a shepherd right out the gate? So you'll have to kind of decide that. That's kind of a conversation for um, along down the line. I might actually do a separate video on that completely. So yes, if you feel like these things line up with you, then you might be a good fit for cosmetology. Lastly, with cosmetology, you should have some kind of interest in hair. Now, I said this last because I didn't. I had no interest in hair. I didn't know how to even hold a brush. I never did my own hair. I still don't really do my own hair. I just kind of let it go and let it be. I learned how to do hair in school. And once I graduated from school, I learned and memorized technical stuff and I just apply it and it is my job. It is not my passion, okay? It's just not, people are my passion. It is not my passion. And I learned that that was okay once I went to um, the last salon that I worked at, my boss said the same to me. She's like, I don't like doing hair. I like people and that's how I am. So that's, this is a start for my career and it can be just a start for your career too. I don't believe in staying at one point. Some people just want to be a hairstylist and those are the people that we need to work in this industry to continue to provide beautiful results for people. I will continue to service my clients that I am building now, but, so don't you worry if any of y'all are watching this, but I intend on moving up into management. That's where my skill set is. And maybe you are the same way. And maybe you dream about owning a salon and maybe you are a shepherd just like myself. And this is a great first step for you, getting your cosmetology license, learning the ropes, do a few years or however long you need it, and learn what you're doing and be, you know, learn what everyone below you will be doing and then guide stylists to success. Just an idea. All right, you guys. Well, I hope that was not too much information for this video, but that was, you know, a whole video in should you be a hairstylist? Are you cut out to be a hairstylist? Do you have what it takes to be a hairstylist? Um, so, all right, until next time, thank you.